Well, here he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Sam Leibovitz. Welcome to Rattled Awake Cafe. <laughs> Thank you, Lonnie. Thank you. You are indeed. Your chapter. Uh, oh, by the way, I uh, this is my uh, psychedelic. Uh, sh uh, sh uh, what do you call these dusters? I don't have a psychedelic rattle. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> That was a great I time. actually do have a rattle I got in Peru, but it's in the other room. I'll bet you do. <laughs> well, um, so Sam, tell us um, a little bit more about why you wrote the chapter that you wrote. So I wrote about my experience with my first facilitator coming into doing psychedelic work um, in, in a non-recreational way, in a really sacred and spiritual way, as, as kind of like a a warning or as a wake-up call to people because i see so many people now plant medicine so popular everyone wants to do ayahuasca and jump in and do this and do that and they're not really taking the time to really do it mindfully which is the whole purpose behind doing this work is to be more mindful and that there really is just some simple, basic questions you can ask that can save a lot of trouble. I mean, I've heard such horror stories. I mean, I've heard of people, I've actually spoken to people who went to ceremonies and they had no idea what they were going to. Oh, and that no. is not the right way to engage in this work. Wow. That's frightening. Yeah. And, and is that because they, they, they get opened up to something different and it's too much to risk? No, it's, it's, it, you know, it's just people start hearing people talk about things. Oh, this one went down to Costa Rica and did ayahuasca. Oh, this one went to Peru. And they're like, oh, I guess I should do ayahuasca too. It's kind of that mind, that group mind thing. <laughs> and, <I have> mind. <laughs> and, and it's like, if you just take a little time to do some research, you'll find that like, you know, ayahuasca is a really intense experience. And there's a lot of other experiences you could have before then that are much gentler to really prepare you for the big stuff. Oh. You know, it's like running a marathon. You don't run a 5k marathon right off the bat. You practice, you do a, a half K, a 1k, a 2k, a 3k, and then you go for the 5k. But somehow with this, people think they can just Go do the big stuff first. And we're not even talking about something physical. We're talking about your consciousness. We're talking about your, your mental health and, and, and your spiritual health. And so I really just wrote it as a cautionary tale to get people to understand that, you know, there are a lot of people out there offering all kinds of things and they may not be doing their own work that much. They might not be... Um, really, uh, they might not have a mentor, they might not be part of a lineage, they might not even be doing it that long. And so for me, I just want people to be safe. You know, I, I'm a big believer in the, the uh, what's it called, the, the, the doctor's oath, um, the Hippocratic oath, at least do no harm. Yeah, And so I, I know that there's a mental health crisis out there. I know that people are suffering and they're looking for anything to alleviate their suffering. I get it. I've been there. But still rushing into something is not the right way to alleviate your suffering. Mm. I didn't realize that baby stepping it, but when you put it in that way of you don't run a marathon right out of the gate, it makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's like, it's like you're going to a gym for consciousness, right? You, you don't go to the gym and you start <laughs> lifting 250 pound weights right away, right? You start, yeah. especially if you've never lifted weights before, you want to start with the 10, 15 pounds, something light. And even if you have lifted weights before, maybe you're doing 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, you, you know, it, it's just this culture and this society tends to uh, promote this idea of going extreme and going all in and and yeah. doing the big thing in in my experience sometimes that doesn't work out so well so you did mention you dropped it with uh the person that they're doing a ceremony with um maybe hasn't done their work right what does that mean so doing your own work is is again, it's, it's the process of your own healing. And that many people are offering these 
essentially healing ceremonies and they're healing on different levels. They're healing on a, a mental level, an emotional level, a physical level, even a spiritual level. But if the person guiding the ceremony is only of a certain level of consciousness, like maybe they've done some work, but they haven't really um, unwound their core traumas. Um, maybe they still are, are living out of their victimhood or their or their predatory nature, that then people can be at risk. Um, first of all, your guide can only take you as deep as they've gone. They're only going to be able to help you to reach the level of peace that they've reached. And if there are things in their own life that they have not dealt with, that they have not faced, they are holding on to emotions and trauma that they haven't processed, that can come out. I mean, I heard the story just a couple of weeks ago of a woman who held a psilocybin ceremony. And in the middle of it, she said, Oh, you, you, you people are too much. You're not, you're, you're not honoring the sacrament. I can't take this anymore. I have to leave. Oh no. In the middle. And all these people are like in the middle of their process. I mean, that to me is unconscionable. And it's those kinds of things I want people to be able to avoid because you can get re-traumatized. Right. You can get, you know, you can end up being worse than getting better after going to one of these ceremonies if you're going with someone who's not truly experienced, not truly trained, doesn't have a mentor, doesn't have a lineage. I mean, you know, there's a lot of so-so um, stuff going on out there. And look, I'm a big believer in this work. It's helped me and my wife heal tremendously over the last 10 years. So I, and it's not that I'm saying don't do it. I'm just saying do it mindfully and carefully like you would anything else. I mean, you, you go to a doctor and he wants to put you on some prescription. You're not just going to take it blindly. You're going to read the instructions. You can maybe, if you're intelligent, you're going to do a little research. You know, are there any side effects? You know, how is yeah. this going to affect me? So let's at least be that level of aware with what we're doing. Yeah, that makes sense. And your chapter is wonderful in that you give bullet points on what people should look for. And that's, it's it, I'm moved by it. It's so important because you're you're showing them where there could be potential pitfalls and and these are red flags that they don't even know that they should know. Right. It's so important. Exactly. And and you know one thing that we've known since the '60s, since the Tirithi Leary days, the importance of set, which is your mindset, of setting, which is the physical environment, and server, who is it that's actually serving whatever you're you're about to ingest so keeping those three things in mind is also very important yeah um i'll wrap this up by just saying that uh there is a, a site out there it was called don't date him girl.com and it was a yeah it was you could guess what it is by the title right there almost needs to be one for uh, -uh this um <laughs> You know, we've got to have communication about this so that other people are can have a better time of what they're trying to do to feel better. Right. Exactly. And <laughs> that's the saying. whole point. Yeah, it is. Sam, thank you for being on Rattled Awake Cafe. And thank you so much for being in the Rattled Awake Podcasters Edition. Be sure to check out Sam's chapter, My Psychedelic Rattle, in the Podcasters Edition of the Rattled Awake series. Thanks again, Sam.